Hello, everybody. Welcome to All Things Aviation and Aerospace. My name is Vince Mickens, and I am with the Private Air Media Group. And we have a great show today. Uh, I know I say that every time I do a show, but they're all great because they all provide a lot of great information for those who are pursuing careers in aviation and aerospace. So this one is about scholarships and, and it's great. I, I've had, I was just telling my first guest, uh, Jim, that we had a lot of uh, conversations about scholarships. All the associations have different scholarship programs with different deadlines. The one I'm gonna deal with today or the four I'm gonna deal with all have deadlines this fall within the next couple of months. So I thought it'd be apropos to go through that and, and touch base with everything and, and see how we're doing. So, um, and I just see, we had Allison join us. Allison, I'm gonna- um, Yes, uh, put me to the back, sorry. Yeah, put you to the back until, <laughs> until time. Thank you for joining us though. Hey, good morning, Allison. So um, anyhow, so we, we uh, the, the goal again is to talk about these scholarship programs and, and there's the specifics of them, why they're so important and, and what the opportunities are. And of course, the, some of the insight on applications, et cetera, and so forth. So my first guest is Jim Viola. Jim is the president and CEO of Helicopter Association International that he has so nicely down behind him. Uh, better known as HAI to the, those of us in the industry. Uh, and Jim has quite the history, as I've learned, uh, and background, not only in flying helicopters and fixed wing. He has his ATP, both uh, fixed wing and rotor. He, he's got three master's degrees. And we could do a show on Jim, but today we'll do it on scholarships. <laughs> but, well, but Jim, it's a pleasure to have you. No, that fits right into scholarships and the importance of education and the, the opportunities that, you know, you invited the people here that, you know, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to provide opportunity for education and uh, we're trying to help people help themselves by applying for some of these. So, no, I, I really appreciate being here with you. Yeah, thank you. Well, it's great to have you. So why don't we get this started and, and talk a little bit about your, your scholarships that AJ, tell us about your program and so about some of the specific scholarships <clears throat> and what you guys, uh, you know, why these scholarships are important and why they were selected as, as something to offer to your members. No, certainly, Vince. And that's, you know, the key word on that, and I think it's probably for everyone, it's scholarships. So it's not just one scholarship. We have uh, multiple opportunities for multiple people to, to get them. One of the first ones is the Bill uh, Sanderson Aviation Maintenance Technical Scholarship. And, you know, when you, you might hear a lot about pilot shortages, but, you know, there's also, you know, me mechanical or engineers, uh, depending on what part of the globe you're in. And so we need help maintaining these vehicles today as well as to the, the future. And so we have seven awards and they come from Airbus, Bell, Leonardo, MD, Pratt & Whitney, Rolls-Royce, and Saffron Helicopter Engines. And all the winners of those uh, receive a full tuition to the maintenance course offered by the manufacturer, as well as the first place winner receives $1,600 strepin that and others will get a $1,000 to help with traveling and lodging when they go to those courses. And then all the winners also re receive complimentary registration to HAI's Heli Expo. Uh, and of course, in this year, it's gonna be in, uh, in Atlanta. And the key thing there is, you know, the networking, the job search, and the people that you meet at uh, at something that size, about 14,000 people plus normally at, at the uh, Heli Expos. And that way they can mingle with others that have earned their AMP certificate. Uh, so to uh, to apply for that, you know, you, within the last two years, you must be a graduate of a Part 147 school or uh, international equivalent. And uh, it really helps make sure that we've got a solid foundation as we move forward on the maintenance side, as well as, like I said, the pilot side. And then yeah. as we get, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. All right, so then as we get into the pilot side, we have the Commercial Helicopter Pilot Scholarship, and we award two scholarships there at $5,000 each. And all the winners receive complimentary registration to Heli Expo again, and a great place, as I talked about, for that networking, same deal where you get to rub elbows with others in the industry. And you can, you know, when, you, when you're looking for, uh, you know, what you're gonna do, um, you know, you wanna talk about where do you wanna live? What kind of aircraft do you wanna fly? You know, what part of the country do you wanna fly? Do you wanna go international? I mean, all that stuff is important. And those are the things that are hard to measure that you get at those type of events. 
And so the applicants for that one must be working towards their commercial pilot certificate and they must be enrolled in a part 141 flight school or again, international equivalent. And we do the international equivalent because you know, we're trying to, you know, Heli Expo, uh, we normally get 70 plus countries and, uh, and even HAI as an association is international and we continue to try to be more international with some of the stuff we've done with partners, partnering with the European Helicopter Association and also, you know, being a show provider for uh, Euro Rotors this year. So we are truly international and we wanna make sure that people understand these scholarships are open to international people as well. Yeah, and you touched on something that, that's really significant, uh, and, th and that is the opportunities that currently exist in the industry that are growing leaps and bounds day by day. I mean, it, everywhere you hear, whether it's on the commercial side, the private side, et cetera, there are just opportunities abound, whether it's uh, to fly or to be a technician or mechanic, uh, et cetera, and so forth. In the helicopter industry, which you know is, is your forte, can you talk a little bit about that and what you guys are seeing and, and have been seeing uh, as far as that goes in the industry? So are you talking about workforce development? Yeah, yeah, workforce yeah. development, but uh, in, in tying it in why it's so important for people to take advantage of the scholarship opportunities. Yeah, well, I mean, the scholarship opportunities, you know, when you set goals uh, as an individual, and I mean, I know you go back to, you know, your early days of aspiring to be a pilot out there and in my early days of you know trying to do the same thing and then trying to figure out okay financially how are we going to make that happen well these are the perfect opportunity to help with that little boost and whatever the dream is out there that uh, that the the next the future is bringing us and we need it in both the pilot side of the house the operators even and even if we're talking about remotely piloted vehicles in the future somebody still an operator is still going to be you know having to do that stuff and then the maintenance side of the house we're always going to be able to we have to be able to maintain those vehicles yeah, no, that's a really great point about about how the industry has expanded too. So in in terms of remote, uh, op, remotely operated aircraft and things of that nature, uh, the UAVs and and the like, and how that's really growing um, and and offering opportunities as well. So um, can you tell us a little bit more about HAI and and how it's helpful to be a member in some of the things that people should be aware of uh, in terms of being involved with your organization? Okay, and I, and I still I'll, I still got two more scholarships that I hadn't mentioned. So let well, me let's go with that. those first. All right. <laughs> so we got the maintenance technician cert, uh, certificate scholarship, and we have two scholarships there at $2,500 each. And uh, you must be enrolled in a part 144, 147 school or equivalent. And again, the, uh, the winners will get that same complimentary registration to Heli Expo. Uh, and then we also have the Michelle North Scholarship for Safety. And that's one award, and that's for pilot must have earned a commercial pilot certificate and demonstrates outstanding aptitude for flying safety. And the winner received the professional education course and safety management uh, systems presented at Heli Expo. And of course, the complimentary registration to the show and hotel accommodations. Now, overall, you know, we talked about uh, Heli Expo, but HAI is a, uh, as an association internationally, you know, we want to start with education, safety, and advocacy to make sure that the industry continues to main, maintain the strength and the prosperity of being able to grow. And we can't grow uh, w without being safe. You know, the 121 world has got there, you know, there was some stuff that was mandated years before the commercial aviation safety team. And currently what the rotorcraft community has, and, and we are expanding and welcoming the new technology with advanced air mobility and urban air mobility, because helicopters have done that mission. So what used to be the International Helicopter Safety Team is now the Vertical Aviation Safety Team. And we're partnered with ICAO as senior um, um, uh, advisors, essentially. And what we're trying to do is help implement the ICAO safety plan globally. And so that's part of the safety. The advocacy work that gets done here in DC to make sure that you know we can't, you know, Mark Baker and I are, are buddies when it comes to we can't lose infrastructure. We've got these great urban air mobility and, and advanced air mobility uh, vehicles coming on board that are vertical capable. So we want to be that we are that industry for the future vertical capable aircraft that can get you downtown more quietly possibly than the helicopter. You know, helicopters aren't going to go away, but these vehicles of the future will get you hopefully to the top of a rooftop building in a congested city. And not only we're we talking New York or Los Angeles, but you know, we're talking about India uh, and other places around the globe where 
you know, you've got the 121 world, you got the big airline, then you've got the business jet possibly, then you got the helicopter, and then you got this nice vehicle, vertical vehicle capability to get you really close and help society. And that's one of the things I think that, uh, of course, vertical lift brings society is that capability that certainly was shown, you know, if you've ever been involved with air ambulance and you've seen them, you know, on the side of the highway where they're saving people's life, or, you know, with the pandemic, we're able to fly um, out to needed areas that are very remote for people that were sick. So very, I'm very excited, as you can tell, to be the <laughs> president CEO of HAI. And, and I've constantly asked people, what can I do for them? Uh, and it's not what you can do for your association. What, and, and you'll hear that the same from Allison and others on here today. We're a really good, I think, a uh, bunch of people in the right place right now. And I appreciate, Vince, you doing what you're doing here today. So that, again, it's the number one thing is education. Where can you go to get educated on helicopters or rotorcraft? And you go to rotor.org and, you know, there you are. It's the encyclopedias of the old days of, you know, when someone was knocking on the door trying to sell you 40, 50 books. Well, now you can just go to rotor.org. And, uh, and by being a member of HAI, you can get behind some of the firewalls. We've got educational courses. So, uh, again, I've said education quite a few, ta- few times, but you uh, have. <laughs> very important. And Absolutely. That, and the thing that comes next with that is opportunities to volunteer and be leaders in your organization. You know, and you can be a leader in your small group, or as you expand, you can join HAI. We've got work groups where you can either be a member of work group, or you can join and be a leader of that work group. So associations, we're here to help you get to what you're dreaming about. You know, those that are out there listening today. Yeah. So uh, as we kind of wrap up things somebody that's a student, high school, college, or, or even they're postgraduate, but they're still trying to figure things out. Um, how do they get in touch with and, and what, are, what are some of the, in other words, do you have student memberships, et cetera, in terms of HAI? Yeah. So the, your basic membership is 95 bucks a, a, a year to get in. Um, and then we've had all the different memberships after that. And the key thing would be to, you know, reach out, check out our webpage. Um, if you come to rotor.org, you'll see that we got Rotor Daily. Rotor Daily is a is a free uh, information, and that's a good way to start. Um, you know, the the membership fees, of course, keeps us going for doing all the stuff that we do. Um, we are all not for profit agencies, I think, on here today as well. So it's not about you know making money; it's making money for industry to help industry continue to grow, help provide some of these scholarships. Uh, be the person that coordinates a lot of these things. So, and and by all means, I want to make sure everybody understands everybody you have on today, we all work together. And we, while we represent different segments, we're all one big team in, uh, in, in this, you know, aviation community. Yeah, I appreciate you pointing that out. I think it's really great to know. So you guys have your uh, convention coming up in Atlanta. Uh, what's the dates on that? Do you know off the top of your head? Yes, it's uh, March 6th, 7th, and 8th in uh, in Atlanta. And we also have European rotors that uh, if you're on the, for the international crowd, and that's going to be in Cologne, Germany, and that's uh, almost the same dates in November of this year. Okay, that's great. Uh, I was bringing it up because if anybody has an opportunity, whether they live in the area or can get to the area, I always think going to these aviation conventions is are, are really great. Uh, it's a great opportunity, not only to network, but to also to kind of see what's going on in the industry face to face, so to speak. So I, I think uh, it'll be great uh, that you guys, you guys are back in Atlanta. You hadn't been in Atlanta for quite a while. So it's right. glad to and, see you uh, back and, and just to let all the locals know, when we do come to the local areas, normally that last day, we'll do a good uh, a discount to get make sure that uh, we, you know, we take advantage of our opportunity of all that stuff being there. All right. And the deadline for scholarships is? I, I think it is coming I'm up. sorry. <laughs> Don't delay. That's the one piece of information I didn't refresh myself on. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's in October, I thought. Yes. Yeah, and I, I had it actually written, as you see me going through my paperwork here. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, I know it's coming up pretty quickly. So uh, with, with an October deadline, uh, again, people can go, you can go to rotor.org. Uh, and look in under scholarships and you can find all the information that you need. Uh, and uh, Jim, uh, I'm glad that you were able to join us again. It was an honor to have you on, on you know, speak for the association and specific to your scholarship program. Uh, wish you guys the best for Atlanta uh, and, and overall in terms of uh, the rotor world. Well, thank you very much, Vince. It was a pleasure being here. So have a great day. You too. I'm going to bring uh, 
go ahead and, and bring uh, Allison back into the picture here. And let you have a chance to, there we go. Sorry, I was so eager. I, uh, I, I joined early. I'm glad I got to hear from Jim. Oh, no problem. Yeah. Yeah, he brought up a great point. All of you guys are in the same boat as far as associations. I say you guys. Uh, I, I've been in the association business for 16 years, and uh, it's it's great that uh, it can be a cooperative thing in terms of these type of programs. So I'm glad you guys got to say hello. It's really yeah. good to see you again, Allison. Nice Welcome to back you. to the show. Thank You've you for having some, me. Uh, Semi regular. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> it's great, though. Um, so, for those of you who are not familiar, Allison McKay is the CEO of Women in Aviation International. And a little side note, she actually used to work for HAI. So <laughs> that's, <right. laughs> that's why the world is so small. Um, exactly. But uh, it's great to have you again. And you guys have quite a robust uh, scholarship program. As a matter of fact, I, I've known that, you know, it's, it's a large number that you guys give away uh, in terms of the different kinds of scholarships and, and the amount. Uh, but I was looking through it and I, I thought, wow, it's almost a book, you know, <laughs> I, I think you guys have. I think 78, 112 this time. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not up to date. Yeah. Yeah, so, well, so one of the, the funny things is, is, um, is we never kind of finish getting new scholarship opportunities added to our existing cycles. Uh, so we opened on July the 1st and, um, and more just kept pouring in. So we are very fortunate this, this cycle to be giving away a little over six hundred and thirty thousand uh, dollars for one hundred and twelve scholarships. Yeah, absolutely. And just going back uh, briefly on the history, uh, you know, Doctor Pe Peggy uh, Shebrian, um, who started Women in Aviation, some what was that? Uh, in the mid nineties. In the mid nineties, yeah, I think it was nineteen ninety. Nineteen ninety. Is yeah, it's actually 1990. And what it's grown to now uh, yeah. is just absolutely amazing. And then all of the different programs that you guys have, uh, which afford people opportunities to really engage and get into the industry uh, from from all different aspects of it. So uh, uh, hats off to her. Uh, yeah. Wanted to go ahead and, and just let you talk a little bit about your programs and your overall scholarship program and, and what you guys are doing with it and uh, yeah. this in for 2023. Yeah, well, thank you for recognizing uh, Peggy because she really uh, was a visionary uh, in terms of the needs of the industry for diversity and the needs of our, our uh, female um, members to network and um, and get together. So um, we have given away um, over $15 million to date in our scholarship program. And um, we really recognize uh, the financial barriers that exist in this industry to pursue your passion. And we try to meet people where they are in their careers. Um, so whether you're a aspiring pilot or maintenance technician or engineer, um, we have scholarships for for the majority of the professions that are in our industry. Um, and, you know, like you said, uh, we have 112, so it can seal, seem a little daunting to get through to see all the scholarship opportunities we have, uh, but we have a drop-down menu, so you can, um, you can scroll from just particular segments of the industry that you're interested in. Um, right. and, and we really, um, we really try to change lives with this program. Yeah. Um, in terms of, I'm sorry, I was, we had another guest that was lining up and I'm, I'm, I'm doing double duty. Uh, I don't have my producer today, so I apologize to everybody for being, being all over the place. Um, but in terms of specifics with some of the scholarships, um, can you talk about, give a few examples of yep. what you guys have, um, yep. off, what uh, you're offering? So we have um, a series of flight training scholarships that um, that pretty much cover the the entire uh, path of training, whether you're getting into it or you are uh, completing your training. Um, obviously, we have A and P scholarships for those that are aspiring to be maintenance technicians, uh, but we also have uh, you know engineering scholarships. We have manufacturing scholarships, um, dispatch 
uh, air traffic control scholarships. We also have a, a series of continuing education scholarships. Um, so if you want to pursue your MBA um, or, or, you know, continue your, your uh, what I say, your desk job training, um, those exist as well. Um, and then one of the ones that I'm kind of most proud of is the internships that we have available as well for those that um, want to, you know, try out different uh, career paths within the industry. Internships are a great way to do that. And the, are those volunteer internships or paid? No, those can be paid. Okay. So that's always music to a student's ears, right? Right. Yeah. What's yeah. the qualification uh, parameter for internships as an example? Uh, so they, they are specific to the scholarship. Um, but all of the requirements are listed per scholarship. Um, okay. our, our donors have the ability to specify the criteria that are important to them. So we don't have a one size fits all. Um, it really depends on what the donor is looking for and what the criteria are to, to, uh, to get into that segment. Okay. And, and just like HAI, WAI requires you to be a member right. uh, to, to, um, to apply for scholarships and we're talking about the scholarships for 2023 and i was just looking at it, it looks like october 1st you you have to be a member by then and, yep. and you still have until october 12th yes for the yes. deadline midnight october 12th is the deadline and um and we get a lot of applications in obviously on october the 12th um, but as a member you can apply for three scholarships um and you know we always say if you didn't get one in this cycle please apply again next year. You know, the, the, the pool of applicants is always changing. And, um, and so don't get discouraged the first try. Yeah, speaking of discouragement, let's dig down on that for just a minute because um, you guys are always telling me about all of the different scholarship programs. And I say you guys, all of the associations yeah. have, have a ton of scholarships actually that are available. Yeah. And yet it seems sometimes challenging. I was mentioning this to Jim with uh, HAI. It seems sometimes challenging to get uh, the momentum going in terms of people really uh, taking advantage of applying for these. And, and I, I, I've had offline conversations about it. Are people still intimidated by the whole application process or um, what, what's I think the deal? That's, I think that's part of it, right? Especially if, if you know, you're required to write an essay, for example, uh, you know, if you don't feel that you are a skilled writer, that can be a deterrent um, for your confidence to apply. Uh, but look, we're not looking, it's not an English paper, right? We're not looking for a proper pronunciation. Not looking for a dissertation. <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, we're, we're the, the reason that there are essays is to, for you to convey your passion and for you to convey why you want this scholarship and what you want to do with your career. It's, it's as simple as that. This is not something where we are um, we are going over it with a red pen. So don't don't really be that discouraged for an essay. It's just it's just the the um, the pool trying to understand who these people are and and what their interests are in the industry. But I yeah, think would also, you recommend? They, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh no no no. Sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say, would you recommend that they go to a counselor or advisor if they're in college? It's usually an advisor uh, to get some assistance, or maybe even a teacher or professor to say. Hey, can you help me go through this application process? Yeah, the, and or if you have a mentor that's outside of your your university path, I I'm a big fan of of mentorship, and I think that everybody has in in our careers have benefited from mentors. So yes, a hundred percent. You know, this is um, something where you can you can definitely bounce ideas off of somebody that's in the industry, um, and and I think that is very beneficial. And you guys have, uh, you know, uh, quite the staff there and everything. Can they also contact your association to get some advice and assistance on it? I'm just trying yeah. to keep it encouraging in terms of people that tend to be hesitant about this. Yes. Yes. Well, first off, we have a ton of information on how to apply for scholarships on our website, but we also have people that um, that are available um probably more than I want them to be in terms of work-life balance, <laughs> but they really are um, dedicated to answering the questions that our, our members have and providing them any resources that they can to make this application process easier. Yeah, I'll do the same thing to you that I did with Jim. Tell us a little bit about Women in Aviation, uh, the international, the association for people that, for one reason or another, yeah. not familiar, especially uh, some of the younger uh, viewers of the show. Uh, and about your upcoming convention next yeah. spring. 
So we um, we are a nonprofit um, that um, whose mission is to really have diversity in our industry. And we, um, you know, we see the stats that are available right now that really haven't changed in, in the last few decades in terms of the representation of women throughout the industry. This is not just a pilot issue. Um, you know, the pilots are, are getting a lot of attention right now in the media for, um, you know, for being a, a massive shortage. But uh, you look at the representation of women in maintenance uh, professions, for example, two and a half percent. You know, that's that's really a, an opportunity, as uh, my colleague Kelly would say, for um, for a lot of uh, improvement. And that really is what our mission is. And that is everything that we do is designed to get and get more women in the industry and keep them in the industry. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, when is your convention? So we are in Long Beach, California in 2023, which is a favorite destination of our members. And it is February 23rd to the 25th. Yeah, great. And you guys had a great uh, convention last year. I believe it was yeah. in Nashville, if I'm not mistaken. It was, it was. Yeah. It was uh, the return uh, back to in-person conferences for us. We had a great turnout and, um, and it was really a, a huge family reunion for our members to get back in front of each other. Um, so the energy was great. And I think that the same will be said for uh, 2023. Um, I think uh, everyone is looking forward to, to seeing each other. Allison, while I have you, tell us a little bit about your girls fly. Um, what's it called? Girl, girls in Aviation Day. Girls yeah. in Aviation thank Day. You for, yes. Thank you for giving that a plug uh, because it is September 24th of this year. Oh, um, wow. It's coming up. We have events throughout the world. Um, all of them are listed on our website. Um, uh, under events and Girls in Aviation Day, you can find one in your local community to attend. Uh, girls are so excited to be um, a part of this day and the energy is great. And all of the events are different depending on who is hosting the event and what resources they have available to them. Um, some can be as small as 10 kids, some can be over a thousand. So um, it's, it's just a really great day to expose young girls to all this industry has to offer, whether what it's age eight, range? so it's, um, eight through 17 really is our target. Um, okay. but you know, if an eight year old has a younger brother or sister that they want to bring along, uh, we will not uh, turn them away. <laughs> you won't kick them out, huh? No way. <laughs> and it's for girls and boys. I also want to say that I think that, that, um, that our message is to expose as many people to the industry as possible. Got you. And to, as we kind of wrap things up, you will be announcing the winners of these scholarships at your convention. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. So okay. um, so they will get notified at sometime around the beginning of the year. And um, if they can travel to conference and they will be awarded at, um, at, at our one of our events throughout the, the, the three days. Um, and it's, it's just a great opportunity for them to be exposed to more people in the industry. Um, I also want to say that we um, I can't announce more than this at this point, but we will have more scholarship money available in this cycle. Um, and so um, I, you know, I ask everyone just to check our website regularly um, and um, and we will hopefully be making that announcement soon. But um, but we're not done. That's that's the message. OK. And while I'm waiting for. Um, Emily, who I think is getting ready to come up on now. Yep. And yeah, Emily, that will be a yes. You can just <laughs> ask me. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Emily, can we hear you? No, we can't. Can you unmute, please? <laughs> and we still can't hear you. There we go. That would probably be helpful, huh? <laughs> <laughs> hi, Emily. Say hi no, to hi. Allison McKay. I don't know if you guys have met. No, I don't. I Emily, have not met. Have we met? Not. Sorry. We, okay, we met very briefly okay. at the Nashville conference. And oh, okay. Saw you and I was like, oh my God, can we take a picture together? So fantastic. We kind of informally met. <laughs> awesome. Well, I hope to see you in Long Beach. I don't want to steal your 15 minutes. So, um, Vince, thank you so much for having me today. I really appreciate it. Absolutely, Allison. Thank you so much for taking the time to be on and wishing you the best of luck with Women in Aviation International and the, the Girls Aviation Day and everything that's coming up for you guys. And that these scholarships so can benefit a lot of people. Yes, 100%. All right. All right. Take care. You too. Thanks. Emily, welcome. Hello. So we have Emily Kennedy. Emily is with Women in Corporate Aviation. Uh, and she's also uh, got her AMP certification and, 
and is is uh, working on her degree with uh, Embry Riddle Worldwide, which I thought was really cool. You kind of decided to do it the other way around, get the certification and then go to college. <laughs> yeah, well, so I started at Embry Riddle, and when I started, I had no idea what I wanted to do. I was kind of like, I don't know what avenues are available in aviation. So one of my um, academic advisors was like, why don't you take some maintenance classes? Just because and I was like okay and I took some and I really liked it and I excelled at them so that's when I decided to take a break from Riddle and then get the license and then finish the degree so yeah I kind of just tossed it in there like a sandwich <laughs> that's okay though that's actually great um uh you're not alone you know there are a lot of people in, in your generation that that have to do different ways find different paths to figure out what they want to do and how they want to do it so not unusual uh Embry Riddle of course has great programs uh, period, but their maintenance program I happen to know a lot about is a very good uh, program there, and yep, yep. Uh, actually did a, a, a live show from there from the maintenance de uh, department. Oh, yeah. that's so cool! Yeah, last that's year, awesome. so it was it was it was very cool. Met the dean and and uh, had a couple of the students on and everything, and and uh, it was very impressive. So yeah, yeah, so. I got to visit um, their maintenance hangar one time when I was visiting for actually a women in aviation conference in uh, Orlando one year. And that was really, really cool. I was like, dang, I wish I could have gotten my AMP from here, but I couldn't move down there. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about women in corporate aviation scholarship program. Uh, what you guys have going on. Cause you have scholarships that are available to, for people to apply and, and you have a deadline coming up. Yes. So the deadline is September 24th. Um, so just make sure you get in your applications before then. But as far as the scholarships that we have available, I feel like Women in Corporate Aviation is very good and very diverse um, with their scholarship offerings. Um, we have scholarships that are for flight training, for maintenance initials. Um, so just not, not just financial scholarships, although we do have those too. And we have ones for legal and safety. Um, and I just wanted to add in that uh, we're very grateful for all of our sponsors and donors uh, from flight safety to the Da Vinci in flight training, uh, executive jet management. Sorry, there's so many. I'm, I'm not oh, going to- Oh, no, no all, problem. I, I have the list here. You have jet stream okay, aviation great. law. Uh, yeah. and, uh, and you ex you said a EJM, uh, executive jet management. Yep. Um, Viasat, which is great. Yeah. Solaris, which is great. I know all of these guys. <laughs> Standard Arrow. Yeah. Um, really is a small world. <laughs> it's, it's a very small world. But no, this is this is fantastic. Uh, and and the variety of the type of scholarships. You even have flight attendant training scholarships. Yes, yes. we have uh, a lot of those with air I'm... care. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, and yes. that you mentioned Da Vinci, right? Yes. Yeah. So, which I believe are for the flight uh, flight attendant uh, courses. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So um, I know we were we were hoping to have um, e e uh, Fallon, who who heads up your scholarship program overall, but she's flying this morning, putting out oh. fires in a CH-47. Uh, oh, you know what? I'm mixing people up. That's I'm OK. Mixing <laughs> <laughs> I'm mixing associations up. No you know? worries. And there's people that know me and say, yeah, we knew he would do that at some point. Having four associations on in one show, he was going to he was going to cross them over. So, so I apologize. Well, that's that. OK, because we were you were still you had invited Jim. And so you got me instead. So right. And exactly. <laughs> exactly. So thank so you. No worries. Thank you for pointing that out. But what I did want to do is just kind of ask you if you could expand a little bit about um this, the application process and things like that for the scholarship program? Yeah, so um, our application process, I have applied for scholarships myself and I do feel like it is quite a an easy application. It's kind of just, it, you click the link through our, our um, website and it just takes you directly to basically the whole application process. And then it just has tabs. So once you start the process, you can kind of go from, entering your information, um, what scholarships you wanna apply for, and then you do your essay there too. So it's pretty streamlined and you can save it at any point and come back. That's what I've done um, if you don't have everything together, but it gives you a good chance to see, okay, I need my resume, I need my flight training logs, logbooks, um, whatever you're gonna need. It gives you a good idea of 
what you need and then you can come back to it later and it's all still there everything that you put in so I feel like it's pretty easy and streamlined to get through um, and of course all our scholarship donors have different requirements for what they need um, but that will be specific to the scholarship offering and you'll see that when you apply. Yeah, you were a answering my next question, and that, that was that was really if, if there was a, a big difference uh, between application of uh, applying for scholarships in some of the various areas. So, so the basic information remains the same, and then it's kind of skewed towards whatever kind of scholarship it is. Exactly. Yeah, basically, it's kind of just to piggyback off of what Allison said is we want to get to know who you are and, you know, what you want to get out of this scholarship, how you're going to use it, etc. Um, so it's really, I think the max amount of words is 750, but double check the website. I'm pretty sure that's what it is for this round. Um, but we just want to get to know your story and who you are. Um, and so I know it seems intimidating writing a scholarship essay, but right. you know, I, I myself have won a uh, women in corporate aviation scholarship in the past. And if I can give out any advice, it's really just to tell a story, you know, don't just say like, or well, say whatever you want, obviously, but, <laughs> but from, from, hey, but you're talking from experience. So they need to hear this. Yeah. Yeah. So I just always recommend, you know, make it a story, make it interesting. Tell, tell us about yourself or something, you know, a hardship that you went through that you had to, a boundary that you had to climb over, um, you know, cause there's lots of um, r bullet points that we have that you can write about um, your background and stuff like that. But I just personally like to make it a story so that it's, they can really not just have info on who I am, but kind of see a visual of who I am as well. So I know that's probably harder than it sounds, but, but make no, it fun. No. Uh, you know, I'm going to take advantage of you representing the younger generation <laughs> and just getting started in your career and ask you, you know, what, what is it that you think uh, makes people a little bit intimidated about it and, and, uh, and have a tendency to, to not take advantage of the opportunities? What, what was the difference for you? What made you, besides the fact that you're obviously very outgoing, made you say, hey, uh, I need to do this? I think for me, it was not even so much that, oh, I need school paid for. I, I need something, you know, I need some assistance paying for school. It was more so, I think that these scholarships can help grow my career and can help with connections and networking. And I feel like that's what's really, really important with these scholarships is we're not just handing out money and saying, here you go, now be on your way. It's like we're opening career doors and we're expanding networks and changing lives and just the knowledge and the networking opportunities that you can make from these scholarships is really, you know, once I had, I had a mentor in women in corporate aviation, you know, I realized that it's so much more than just here's a check, you know, go on your way. Um, so it just really opened doors. And so for me, I think what kind of held me back in the beginning was just the application process, the whole like, oh man, I got to get my resume together and oh, I got to write this essay and oh, is that enough words? And a problem that I had was cutting it down enough because at one scholarship round, it was only 500 words. So I was like, I kept ending up at like 600 and 700 words. And I'm like, how am I going to cut out enough information where they know who I am, but it's not too much um, or I don't go over the requirement. And I think for a lot of people, that's what's so intimidating on top of having schoolwork and having a job. And then, you know, if you have other extracurricular activities, like it's, it can be hard to squeeze in, but if you just set aside for me, what I had to do was just set aside, like, you know, two to three hours every weekend and work on it. Just, just work on scholarships. Don't do anything else, you know, and then that kind of helps you relax during the rest of the week because your mind is not like, Oh God, when am I going to have time? Like you, if you already set that time aside, then you know, like, that's my time to work on my scholarships. So that's, that's what I, the case for me. <laughs> no, that, that's really great. I, I think your um, explanation about it's perfect to, to help people understand. It is a bit of a process, but if you, if you focus on it, uh, you can make it happen. And as I discussed with uh, Women in Aviation International, as an example, that, you know, have somebody help you out if you're just not comfortable yeah. with certain aspects of it. And, and figure things out with that. So you guys have a tight window on this. So you, you have a deadline of September 24th, and then you actually award the scholarships uh, the next month in October on the yeah. 19th. 
Yep, uh, I think it's at base. Yes. At, at base at NBAA's yep. convention down yep. in Orlando. So, um, w- which is great. I mean, that's a, a, it's a, it's a quick turnaround. I take it you guys have yeah. like a, a panel of people that review all of the scholarship. And I, you said a number earlier. Did you say you get up to 750 applications? Or was that a different number and I'm mixing it up? Um, we have handed uh, over the past, I think, 16 years. Oh, we handed out. Okay. We, yeah. Oh, oh, that's what I was saying. We're not just handing out money, but we are um, over the last 16 years. Uh, Women in Corporate Aviation has awarded over 200 scholarships and they're valued gotcha. at over $750,000. So yeah. Seven, okay. You didn't say yeah. the thousand. Part. So when you said 750, I wasn't sure what to add it. Oh yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Three quarters of a million dollars. That's a lot of money that's, yeah. uh, that's out there and that, that there's an opportunity for. So, so yeah. very glad to hear that. And I also appreciate you, um, uh, giving the insight about the scholarship process as we kind of wrap up here, I wanted to, uh, ask you one, how you got involved with women in corporate aviation, which is a great organization. And, and two, um, what, what kind of things have you been doing with them since you got involved? So I initially found out about women in corporate aviation when I went to the women in aviation conference in Long Beach, uh, 2019. And I, it's funny because aviation really is a small world. I, when I was doing my Tiny. online courses at Embry <laughs> Riddle, I met a guy who was like, Oh, you're going to the conference. Well, you should meet these two pilots, these two women. And so through them, they were part of women in corporate aviation, they're Gulfstream pilots. And they just introduced me to, you know, the entire women in corporate aviation organization. And from there I made a ton more mentors. Um, they're the best They're, I mean, they're, I could talk about them all day, but I won't. Um, <laughs> but so I've, gotten more involved uh in the past couple of years um i am now the volunteer coordinator for women in corporate aviation so if you want to volunteer send me an email volunteer at wca-intl.org um because that's what's really helping and benefiting the organization like everybody that's on the scholarship committee it's all in their free time like we need you know we need good people in business aviation and and people that are passionate and people that want to volunteer and, and be in the mix, you know, those people, they aren't getting paid for it. You know, they're passionate, you know, they're, they want to, they want to help make a difference. And so for me, my long-term goal is to become a mentor to some, you know, more females that are kind of intimidated by maintenance. You know, it's, it's been a male dominated field for so long. Right. I was uh, actually going to bring that up about that. I was, I wanted to be gentle about it, but I wanted to ask you that's okay. being, being no, but being a woman in, in the maintenance aspect of things, which is still male dominated, but I'm seeing a lot more women go into the yep. AMP world and that type of thing. Um, first of all, what, what drew you to it, uh, to, to want to do maintenance when you were at school and you said, Oh, I kind of like this, this, uh, the mechanic side of things. And, and then about that, about being a woman in a male dominated aspect of the industry. Yeah. So honestly, I really don't, I wish I had a good answer for what attracted me to maintenance, but all I can say is that it, it interested me in a way that a lot of other avenues didn't. Um, I like the hands-on aspect. I like the trying to, you know, troubleshoot. And I guess I, I like to look at challenges as fun versus being like, oh man, this is going to be horrible. Like, I don't want to do this. You know, I always try to look at it as a fun challenge. And as far as being a female in a very male dominated part of aviation, uh, I think a lot of it has to do with where you end up. What organization do you go to? Uh, The first place that I worked at as an AMP, I didn't last very long, like under six months, because it just didn't, there was not a lot of room for growth. Um, They didn't have a very solid training program. So I would say, don't be afraid to stay stuck in those kind of places. And so I left, went somewhere else. And now the place that I'm at now, it's, I'm the only female that's a technician, but it feels like, I hate to say this because I know it's cliche, but it feels like I'm part of a family, like a work family. Um, They, you know, advocate for me. They push me to do things that I'm like, oh, I can't do that because I'm not strong enough. And they're like, yes, you can. Like, come on. So as long as you're working in an environment where people want to see you succeed, um, I don't think it matters if it's 
male or female, like you just need to find a place where you fit in and where you can grow and where people are encouraging you to try your best and do your best. Um, and that's the best advice that I could give on that. <laughs> I went to uh, I looked at the website for the company that you work for. Are you working on the Learjet? Yes. So we work on 31s, 35s, and 45s. Oh, nice. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's an air ambu- What's the name of the company again? Medway Air Ambulance. Medway, yeah. Up in Gwinnett at the, yeah. yeah. Yep. Uh, yep. Atlanta's kind of old stomping grounds. They used to fly out of PDK, so. Oh, cool. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I know, I know the <laughs> airspace really well down there. But so, oh, nice. well, that's really cool. You're working on iconic aircraft. I, you know, I guess you know that. Yeah. Lear, yeah. Lear has quite the name, goes way back. Definitely. Yeah. I didn't really know much about Learjets until I started working here. And then that's something I like to do is when I start working, you know, on a specific plane, um, I really want to get super curious and intrigued and be like, well, what can I learn about this plane? So after I started working here, I just started watching started. Like a bunch of documentary history, history videos on Learjet. So <laughs> God, it's amazing. It's yeah. got an amazing history. <laughs> it, yeah. does. it does. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's very smart of you to do that. So uh, do you see a long term career on the maintenance side or you think that may because I, I thought you I saw that you're um, getting a degree on the safety, I think, or. Yes. So my uh, major is in aeronautics um, and then my minor is in aviation safety. And that's a good question that you ask. And I get it a lot. And it's also one of those things where I'm like, I have no idea. I really like doing maintenance. And it's just fun for me to learn it all and know the plane. And I think eventually maybe I'll, you know, I, I don't know, level up or, or move up to some other position, but I don't want to put a title on that position. Cause I don't want to be, I don't want that to be my goal is like having a certain title as, oh, I want to be the DOM or I want to be the director of operations. I want to see like everything that's out there and then kind of go from there. Um, because I feel like every day I'm learning a new position in aviation, a new title. I'm like, oh, I didn't know that existed. Like, tell me about it. And so I guess I'm just trying to keep my doors open. Um, but I definitely want to stay on the maintenance side, at least for, you know, quite a few years and really, really be knowledgeable, knowledgeable about it. Cool. While yeah. I'm waiting for uh, wor- Whirly Girls to join us, um, and, and I'm hoping they'll still be able to make it, they're the ones that I was talking about where the, yeah. <laughs> their vice president of scholarships, she's actually flying right now oh, wow. uh, in, a, in a CH-47 Chinook. That's the twin rotor helicopter yep. fighting fires. So uh, some important. fires apparently broke out last night. And so this morning oh, wow. she had to hit the ground running, so to speak. Oh, wow. Um, and, and so so there's a substitute that's, that's going to be uh, representing them, hopefully, if they're going to punch in shortly. So I'll take a couple of more minutes and I'll ask you this. Um, because I'm also taking advantage of you again, representing a young organization. <laughs> yes. And you know what? She is here. Let me see if I cool. can uh, put her in. Just Bye. hang on a second while I uh, add her in. Uh, she should automatically be in. Can you hear me? I can hear you, but I can't see you. I, you have my video off. I'm not able to turn it on myself. I've been here for about 25 minutes. I got to see Allison. Oh, I'm gosh. Or listening to Emily. There we go. Yes, I popped in with my face. I wasn't aware that I should have had that off. <laughs> so you signed. I'm sorry. You should have spoken up. I, I was like, oh God, sorry. kill time, kill time. I'm glad I was able to join a little early because I learned a lot actually um, from both Emily and Allison. So it's been a pleasure listening in here and thanks for having us. Oh, absolutely. Um, it's, it's great. And, and uh, I'm glad you guys get a chance to say hello. So uh, but we, we're now down to about 11 minutes. So I'm going to get started with you, Jessica. <laughs> Emily, Sounds take good. care. Thanks for everything. Thank and wish you the best with your career. Thanks. If you don't mind, I'm going to stay on because I want to hear Jessica talk too. But I'm going to. Absolutely. Yeah. No pressure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Ben. Hey, Jessica. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm going to do my absolute best to fill in for Fallon. I know those are very big shoes to fill, but I am. I'm here and I'll do the best I can. <laughs> no, no, I appreciate it. So you're the executive director of Whirly Girls. Yes. And is that fairly recent? Yes. Um, I've been with the Whirly Girls for about seven years now. My first five years were in various board positions. 
Um, and then they got, um, they had the ability to kind of bring on a part-time executive director. So I jumped on that right away because I've loved this organization since the moment I joined it. Um, so it's just a part-time position and um, we've been able to do a lot of really good things these last two years. So it's, a, yes. it's been my honor to, to be there. Great. Tell us a little bit for people that may not know, just give us the elevator on Whirly Girls uh, and, and, and a little bit about your aviation background, if you would. Sure. Yeah. Um, so Whirly Girls is a female helicopter pilot organization. Um, we're a membership based organization. We were established in 1955, um, essentially by the first 13 rated female helicopter pilots. Um, so we have the primary goal and have since 55 to advance women in helicopter aviation. We serve as a nonprofit and over the years have developed just a really amazing um, helicopter scholarship program for women to help, you know, advance their career, support their career, network and move on um, to where they want to be in the industry. So that's kind of the gist of what the Whirly Girls are. Um, a little bit of my background, I'm a CFI, CFII and helicopters, um, but I've actually been flying the desk more these days. I work in insurance, focusing on aviation insurance right now. Um, so I still talk the talk, but I'm not flying the aircraft as much. You're just working more on fun. it though, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm learning a whole nother side of things. And now everything is about risk. And um, so it's, yeah. it's been interesting to see it from that point of view. But uh, someday I will get back out there for sure. What's your um, go-to helicopter for the time? For now? <laughs> um, right now it's the 44. That's the closest uh, that I can jump into at any moment to where I live. So I, I do like the Robinson aircraft. Yeah, Robinsons are great. So tell us about the scholarship programs with Whirly Girls. Yeah, so our scholarship program... Um, the one thing I love the most about our scholarship program is there's a lot of actual flight scholarships where you get actual flight time. Um, we average about 150,000 a year in different training opportunities. Um, in support of our mission, the main goal with these scholarships is basically to, um, for women to be able to add to their resume and have something that's gonna help them get to that next step in their career. We try to keep it super, a big variety on some different things there. We have everything from, you know, classroom training with the Garmin, um, CRM, AMRM training courses, um, Airbus, double IMC courses, those kind of things. Um, and then we also have, you know, some bigger ones. We have instrument rating scholarships. We have mountain training scholarships, external load training scholarships. Um, so women are able to really, you know, get some specific types of training that are going to maybe get them into that company that's flying that, that type of operation. Um, you know, we've got a lot of returning sponsors that have been with us for a lot of years. We've had flight safety for a lot of years. Um, we have had Robinson for many years. They offer two scholarships for us. You can either choose a 22 or 44 or the R66. Um, and then we've got some, you know, newer stuff this year. We have PHI that has joined us this year with um, a Bell 407 scholarship. We have um, Southern Utah University is doing something a little bit unique, uh, where I guess it's a little more targeted, but um, should you want to enroll in a university program or if you're already enrolled in Southern Utah University, um, they have a $20,000 offering um, towards flight training while attending their program, which is huge. Um, Bristow Group is, is offering an initial, which is something we've always kind of wanted. We pertain a lot of our scholarships. You kind of have to already be a rated female helicopter pilot because they're specialized. You're adding them on to certain things. Um, and so we've wanted to be able to take someone who's kind of starting out and help them in that journey. So Bristow Group um, is offering that um, and let me see, we've got so, so many good things. Some of the ones that you are guys really- guys have a ton of them. <laughs> I know, we do. We have 19 scholarships this year. Um, like I said, we average around $150,000. Some of the ones that are closest to my heart that our organization facilitates ourself. Um, one self-funded scholarship that we put, you know, the money that we raise into is an add-on. 
So a fixed wing female pilot is able to add on a helicopter rating. Um, and then we do a memorial every year dedicated to, to somebody. This year we're dedicating our memorial to um, our late board member, Laura Trout. So that'll be in her memory and a lot of her Colleagues, family members have have made donations in her honor to support that scholarship. It's, it's a very um, it's a very flexible scholarship. Our memorial, you can kind of choose what you want to um, use it for, and, and you put that in your essay. So it's a really it's really great. But yeah, everything is listed on our website. Um, we do have a new website, so I feel like I need to put that disclaimer out there. Um, it is awesome but we are still working through a couple of things, but we're monitoring it all the time. So we're fixing Is that things. whirlygirls.org? Whirlygirls.org, yep. Okay. And your yep. scholarship deadline is on Sunday, October 2nd. So uh, yes. a, a little over a month from now. Um, anything you want to uh, share about the process for applying? Yeah, absolutely. So you have to be an active member um, by the 30th of September. Uh, which is still plenty of time, you know, to become an active member. And then, like you mentioned, the deadline is October 2nd to get those applications in. It's super easy online with this, you know, kind of new process that we've put in place. We tried to eliminate a lot of the, the harder, um, you know, holdups. So once you go online, you go under apply for scholarships, it pretty much just feeds you through the process. You can apply for as many as you want. There is no limit. You can, if you want to, anything that you qualify for, there are some that have specific requirements, um, you know, based on experience, but if you, whatever you qualify for, you can apply for, there's no cap. Um, and we encourage people to do that. We have a ranking system. So you kind of rank what you want the most. And we, we do our best to accommodate based on, you know, who's chosen as, as the winners. Great. Um, Jessica, you want to tell us anything about up any upcoming event or anything else about Whirly Girls? We do have a few minutes and I want to make sure I give Whirly Girls the same opportunity I've given the other associations to talk about the association overall and any special event coming up. Yeah, sure. Um, I guess probably the biggest thing to mention is that we do award the winners um, at the HAI Heli Expo. So the upcoming Heli Expo in 2023. We have our banquet the Sunday before the week of the expo. Um, we bring all of our sponsors together. We, we actually bring the winners there. We honor them at, at a banquet. We um, you know, present them with their, their awards. And then we spend the time to walk them around the show floor, introduce them to their sponsors and you know, really provide that in-person networking opportunity. It's an expense that we occur, incur as an organization, but we have found it to be so beneficial for networking alone, that it's something we're not willing to let go of. So um, I'd say that'd probably be the biggest thing to put on the calendar is that banquet, the Sunday before the expo. Um, like I said, we interact with the sponsors, the winners, um, and then we, we interact during the show. So it's a really great way to kind of bring everyone together and really see the reward from all the work that's been put in. Absolutely. Well, this is great. I, I, I'm i sorry that, that we were a little bit tight on time and that I totally missed <laughs> because everybody else was popping up uh, before their time to come on and I didn't see your video. So, and you didn't say anything <laughs> because you didn't want to interrupt us. <laughs> so, uh, but, but I appreciate all of the information. Uh, again, it's whirlygirls.org. Uh, and then they can uh, find out more information about the scholarship availabilities and things like that. And you guys will be in Atlanta with HAI. Uh, mm -hmm. which uh, that's a that's a great convention that they have and it'll be fun to see them in Atlanta again have, they haven't been there in a while also wish you uh, the very best with your uh, rotor wing career if you will <laughs> you. and the opportunity so a lot of different people watch this uh, webcast and, and including the the president and CEO of uh, HAI who was just on at the beginning of it so I'm sure he will see that you are out there looking <laughs> for opportunities to, uh, to fly. I take it that, that you're, you're still pursuing, a, uh, you know, I shouldn't be presumptive, that you're pursuing a, a opportunity to be a professional helicopter pilot? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, okay. I have my commercial rating. I just, um, you know, work-life balance. I've got little kids and a lot going on. Ah. But once they get a little older, mom's getting back in the, 
in the PICC. Well, that's even more <laughs> for you. That's even more of a reason for you to be flying. Uh, yeah. The, to bring home even more more bread, right? Absolutely. <laughs> <those> yep. <laughs> yeah. My oldest is very into aviation, but he prefers airplanes. I don't, you know. We, we're still oh, I don't supporting know where he it gets that from. airplanes oh, and oh, not helicopters. Oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I, I, I was I was telling uh, Jim earlier, I, I, I love both sides. So I, I love yeah. helicopters and airplanes. I think they they offer their unique aspects, but they're both anything that flies. I'm usually pretty good with. So, yeah, <laughs> but that's how old is your son? Nine. Uh, okay. six, two boys, six and nine. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> nine. Perfect age. He's going to be a yeah. great pilot one day. So. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. All the best to Whirly Girls and the best to you. Thanks again for being on and uh, you take care. Thank you. Well, thanks Thank everybody you. for watching all things aviation and aerospace. Um, appreciate everybody having the opportunity to, to find out a little bit more about some of these scholarship opportunities with Helicopter Association International, Women in Aviation International, uh, Whirly Girls and Women in Corporate Aviation. Uh, these were all scholarships that are coming up with deadlines in September and October, which is thus why I'm doing the show. But the main point was to give you the opportunity to find out more detail about what these uh, scholarships offer and what may be applicable to applicable to you. So I hope I hope you found it. I will be doing a, another, uh, actually two more shows on scholarships because there are more scholarships out there that are coming up with later deadlines going into 2023, et cetera. And one of the, one of the ones that uh, I found out about after this show was already kind of locked down, uh, and, and that has to do with the, the United States Air Force uh, and their AIM High program. Um, they have a, a program uh, that provides a scholarship for flight training in the summer, and they're, they're actually having an application process that will start, I believe, uh, October 1st, if I'm not mistaken, for a month. Uh, and that's for applying for a scholarship for next year. I looked at their application and it might be a little intimidating. So you, you definitely wanna get going with it if you're interested. Uh, you might wanna get a little help on it too. Uh, just quite a bit of information uh, that, uh, that you, they, they want you to provide. But they, it's, a, it's a robust, program uh, for their uh, AIM High Flight Academy in the summer, next, next summer. Uh, it'll be a great thing for you to check out. And that kind of wraps it up for everything about scholarships this go around. Thank you as always for watching and listening to all things aviation and aerospace. Uh, if uh, I always want to ask you to please subscribe to Private Air Media Group uh, and check out some of our other shows uh, on either YouTube or Facebook um, when you get an opportunity. Thanks again. Everybody take care. My name is Vince Mickens with the Private Air Media Group. We'll see you next time.